In this video, I'm going to go over combining and lofting objects in order to blend them together seamlessly. So I'll start by zooming onto this plane and eight-sided cylinder that we have here. We've already got the plane selected, so I'm just going to go ahead and add a Boolean modifier. Once I do that, I'll select the cylinder as our target mesh, and I'll set the operation to Union. Once I do that, I'm going to hide the cylinder in our viewport and I'm going to apply this before I do anything else. So once that is applied, I'll just come down here and get rid of this extra portion here. So switching over to the wireframe and jumping into edit mode and getting rid of those faces. Now let's switch to the top view and get back into solid mode. And now I'm going to pull out the knife tool and make sure angle constraint and cut through is active. Now the hotkey for angle constraint is C and cut through is Z. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect that point to the edge of that plane like so. I'm going to hit E on the keyboard to start a new cut. So I'm just going to go all around this mesh and connect these points to the edge of the plane. Once I do that, I'm going to accept those cuts and I'm going to select the edges that were created as a result of that boolean operation and I'm going to get rid of them. And I'll switch over to the vertice mode and I'll merge the rest of them together like so. After that, I'll basically switch to face mode and I'm going to inset this face here. I'll select the faces on the side and repeat command by holding down shift and R. And I'll go ahead and select all the faces on the plane like so and hit shift R again to inset them. So once this is done, I'm just going to hop back out and add a subdivision surface modifier to this. So once I do that, I'll go ahead and hit shade smooth. And now we've successfully blended this cylinder with this plane here. Now, if you want to edit the angle of that fillet there, we can simply select the edge on the top here, like so. And we can just move this up and we can select the edge around here, around the cylinder and scale that out. And as you can see, it's basically increased the angle of that fillet there. Now let's just hop into the shading mode and add a high contrast material just to review how this looks. So as you can see, it shades wonderfully. And we also have all quads here except for the cap here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and jump into edit mode, just disable our subdivision surface modifier for the moment, hop to the top view and cut an edge vertically as well as horizontally like so. And now we have all quads. So as you can see, it shades well, and we also have all quads and we were able to blend this two together seamlessly. Now let's move on to the cylinder that we have here. Now this is also an eight side cylinder and you can do this with eight side, 16 sides, really doesn't matter because we're gonna be subdividing these anyway. So I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this and rotate this on the X axis at any degrees. Then I'll bring this over to the front. And now what I'm going to do is bring the origin to the bottom of the second cylinder here so that we can snap this to the edge here. And what I have in mind here is to create a T-joint. So let's just do that. So jump into edit mode, switch to vertice, and I'm gonna go ahead and set cursor to selected. Once I do that, I'll hop back out and set the origin to 3D cursor. So now we've successfully brought the origin to the bottom of the second cylinder here. And I've already got snapping active and just make sure you activate snapping and have vertice snapped on. 
So now I'm just going to go ahead and snap this like so to the edge here. Once I do that, I'm just going to hop over to the vertical cylinder that we have here and I'm going to cut a loop in here in the right in the middle. Then I'll select, I mean, I've already selected the cylinder there and I'm going to add a Boolean modifier and select the second cylinder here as our target mesh and set the operation to union. Then I'll do the same thing, just come over here and hide that cylinder. And I'm going to go ahead and apply that modifier. Now let's just take a look at this. So as you can see, it's gone ahead and created a few extra vertices as a result of that Boolean operation. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. And I'm also going to get rid of these caps here. So switch to face mode, go ahead and get rid of these caps. And then I'm going to switch to vertice mode, switch to wireframe, just select all those vertices there. And I'm going to hit Alt M on the keyboard and that's going to bring up the merge versus option and I'm going to merge by distance and as you can see we've now gotten rid of all those extra vertices there now we can see that this um, sort of uh, pushed our vertices a little bit out of place and we can actually snap those together by simply coming over here and clicking on this and then snapping them to the ones about. So I'm just going to go ahead and snap those into place like so. So now that I've snapped those together, I'm going to go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier to this. Now we have this T joint here, but we are going to want to control the curvature of this. So in order to do so, I'm going to add a control loop. So I'm just going to disable our subdivision surface modifier here for the moment. Just add a control loop here and at the top and bottom of the cylinder as well, like so. And then I'm going to activate this again. And now we can see that we've blended these two cylinders and created this T joint here successfully. And if we go back into the shading tab and just review this again, we can see that we have this nice T joint that shades properly and also has all quad geometry. So now we're going to move on to the next one, which is this cylinder and cube here. And what we're going to do with this is we are going to basically loft these together. So I'm going to go ahead and first bring the cylinder up like so, select both of them, switch to edit mode, and I'm going to switch to face mode, select these faces and get rid of them. Then I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the uh, T-joint here. So I'm just going to set the origin to the bottom of this. So I'll just switch to versus mode and then bring the cursor to that selected portion there. And then I'll just hop back out, set the origin to 3D cursor like so. And then I'm just going to add a cut in the middle right here, like so. And I'll just bring this down. Make sure I select the right mesh and go ahead and do that. Once that's done, I'll just select both of these and I'm going to join them together. Then I'll select the verts here. I'm going to go ahead and just attach them to the cube that we have here. So in order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and enable auto merge. And you can find that in the active tool context menu. So now I'm just going to drag this with the move tool and just snap them together like so. And 
and I'm going to go ahead and add some extra loops there to accommodate for that um, loop from the cylinder that we had there. And then I'm going to switch over to wireframe for the moment and go ahead and select some of these vertices and merge them together. So shift R to repeat command. Now we've successfully merged all those vertices together. Then I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier. So I forgot to add some control loops to this. So let's just add some control loops here. So I'm going to add one control loop at the top here and one at the bottom, like so. And then I'll select the faces on the inside here and just inset them. I'll do the same for the top as well. And I'll switch to top view and just cut in an edge vertically as well as horizontally so that we have all quads. So now you can see we've managed to blend this cylinder and this cube to get something that has starts off with a cylindrical top and finally ends with a square base. So this is how you loft objects together. So I'm just going to go ahead and shade smooth. Then I'll go ahead and hop back into the shading tab and I'll select this mesh here and I'm going to assign a metallic material to this. Now let's review this mesh up close. And as you can see, it shades well, has all quads, and has no pinching or bumps in the mesh. So this is how you go about lofting and combining surfaces together seamlessly. Now I'll admit that these examples were abstract. However, these techniques are extensively employed when 3D modeling. I hope this demonstration was informative, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And thanks for watching.